What's up everybody, 915 Mang here doing a little video today. I hope you guys are doing really good. I'm gonna kick back, enjoying the day, doing some ribs, smoked ribs. This smoker right here that I got, I actually got it by selling frags. I sold enough frags to be able to get myself a decent smoker and uh, I use it as much as I can. Doing some pork ribs right here and uh, they're gonna come out pretty bomb. But in this video, what I wanna talk about is corals. Um, usually when you look at a reef tank, you're looking at a reef tank, it's peaceful, has some great colors, lots of good things happening right there. You got different fish, variety of different corals. You got LPS, large polyp stony, SPS, small polyp stony. You got soft corals, zoas, leathers, all kinds of things. And something that you don't really think about is coral warfare. So I want you guys to stick around. I'm going to show you some of that coral warfare actually happening. And uh, you can see for yourself. But first, if you haven't done so, guys, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It will really help me out. Uh, I enjoy doing these videos. And you know what? I push videos out almost every single week, all year. And I have quite a few videos for you to catch up on if this is your first time watching. So let's go ahead and get into this video. This is early, early in the morning, and uh, this is something that is happening in your tank. And uh, if you need to go ahead and uh, turn on the light, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I have a blue flashlight. It's a uh, Aquamax flashlight that I got from Marine Depot. And uh, what it does, it just brings out the florence, uh, the colors. And it's going to help you see some of the what's actually happening in this tank. You're going to see some crazy sweepers. You're going to see tentacles out. And you're going to see what I'm talking about, this whole coral warfare. Now, in this video, I'm going to tell you some things that you can do to avoid some of the situations that I'm having. Um, I'm going to give you five easy steps for you to do. And the first thing that you need to do about your coral is research, okay? You need to figure out what you're getting yourself into. Uh, some stores will just sell you whatever and that's if you have a bad store you're gonna have a good local fish store that's gonna tell you you know this galaxia coral has some serious sweepers even during the day and, and it's gonna destroy everything around it looks cool but something to think about is that one galaxia coral is gonna be taking up quite a bit of space in your reef tank and if you don't have a big 180 where you can space things out a six foot tank or six foot 120 you have yourself a little nano that's going to be a big problem guys so step one research see if that coral is aggressive um, and go from there number two you want to space your corals out you want to have your corals have plenty of room to grow and spread okay so if you have a certain kind of acan it's okay to place it next to another acan or a different variety of acans so long as you know they have space between the acans and the let's say candy canes because they will sting each other and kill each other you can see that those candy canes right there those are sweepers but they're looking for food okay so like if you have something else that's close by the other sweepers might kill the candy canes and then you'll have a dead set of candy canes keep watching this video I'm actually going to show you some serious sweepers here in a minute and you're going to see what the heck I'm talking about let's go ahead and see these sweepers but also I'm going to give you step number three where you can minimize the amount of coral warfare so step number three is really simple and we do it all the time is isolate rapid growing coral a good example of that is green star polyps or GSP looks really cool but you know what it will seriously destroy your sticks it will destroy some LPS um, so you don't you want to keep an eye on that you want to make sure that that GSP doesn't spread too fast and then when it does you need to be be able to go ahead and frag it cut it up and move it away and trade it with somebody else so that's a really easy step just isolate those rapid growing corals so let's check out this chalice. This is a Miami Hurricane chalice, and you can see those sweepers are huge. They're out there, and they're going to sting whatever 
is right next to it. Right that I have next to it is chalices, okay? So the next step that you want to consider is water movement. You want to have nice water movement, something that's going to, if a coral's throwing out chemicals, the, that chemical's not going to just stay there and settle there. It's going to be moving around the tank and breaking down. And so it's going to be really easy right there. But you can see those sweepers. Those sweepers right there are no joke. And this is not the only uh, chalice that I have in this tank. It's located next to some other chalices. But you can see if those sweepers were to hit that meteor shower, that meteor shower would probably be done. But uh, most of the flow is going one way, one direction. So that's pretty nice. And the fifth step that I'm going to go ahead and tell you to use Use them protein skimmers because it's going to get whatever chemical is in your tank, it's going to pull it from the water column because you're using a protein skimmer. You can use carbon and, uh, of course, water changes. But look at those sweepers, guys. Looks really cool at night. Something that you need to look at. Not all of my chalices are doing these. The zoas, zoas usually won't do that, but the zoas will grow on top of uh, your corals and kill them. So they because all your corals, they're competing for space. And if you don't have a big tank, um, you know what? Those corals are going to be fighting even more. That's why you need to frag. So, of course, this is something to think about. I want you to think about this in your own tank so you can figure it out with yourself because you need to be thinking about coral placement. Um, coral placement is important because I'm going to show you the next piece of coral that I have was actually a branching purple and green hammer. Um, it was a nice size colony you've seen it in my videos before. But a hammer, as deadly as it you think it is to the other corals, it's no match against a Hollywood stunner. You can see this Hollywood stunner right here, it's massive. But it also has these big, big sweepers all over the place. And I noticed that my hammer was getting stung. And uh, actually, I lost quite a few heads because this uh, hammer right here has some serious, this uh, chalice actually has some serious sweepers right there. And uh, it's touch, reached out and touched my hammer. So I'm gonna just going to let you uh, check it out and you can see the damage that it's done itself. <laughs> You can actually see all those heads that I lost right there. There's at least six heads right there where you could see. Um, just got damaged because of this Hollywood stunner. It's grown huge. It's like a uh, plate now. It's a really big plate. It's plating out. And uh, this is all happening while we sleep in our little peaceful reefs. Something to think about, guys. Coral placement and the chemical warfare, the coral warfare that they're doing. They're trying to kill each other because they're fighting for space in the reef so i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys like and subscribe and finish watching have a good one guys thanks guys